my name is Dr. Christopher Matthews. I am a professor at the Al Andalus Theological Seminary in Seville, Spain. The reason I'm here today is I am a uh, research scholar in the area of 16th century Spanish refugees, especially those that fled at the onset of the small Protestant Reformation that took place during that time. The special interest I have here, I'm in the stacks of Wadham College, which there are, I'm told there's over 17,000 volumes in this amazing collection, and as a subset of that is the Benjamin B. Whiffen Special Collection that has to do with Spanish and Italian reformers of the 16th century. Here are quite a few primary documents, which is amazing for researchers to be able to have access to original volumes. And uh, the special aspect about this particular collection is that Benjamin B. Whiffen often wrote handwritten little uh, comments on each one of these volumes to give you the historical flavor as to where he found them, what purpose they have, how they cross-reference with other things he knows, and it's like having a conversation with a man from the 19th century who was a, a great lover of all things Spanish and actually uh, has done a tremendous service for scholars and mankind by putting together this collection. So for instance, let's start with uh, one particular volume of interest that I thought would be a good uh, reference and that is this one. This is the, the New Testament uh, written and translated in 1543 now, a New Testament wouldn't be remarkable in itself, necessarily, but this happens to be the very first translation of the Bible into contemporary Spanish of the 16th century in the history of the world. This was done by Francisco de Encinas, who was a Spaniard, graduate of the University of Alcalá. And one of the remarkable things about this, and it's noted by Whiffen, and also it has an amazing uh, dedicatory passage in the front, is that he dedicated this volume to Charles V, the Emperor of Europe and the first uh, Spanish king to have held that title. And Charles V, being a fellow Spaniard, would appreciate, in one sense, this translation into contemporary Spanish. The only thing was the uh, system at that time of the Inquisition disagreed with the idea of having uh, the Bible in vernacular language. They felt that was a dangerous thing. So when Francisco de Encinas presented this to Charles V, he references in his uh, foreword that uh, in Deuteronomy it says for the Old Testament kings to be always reading the book of the law so they would be able to govern better. And he makes the, a bridge to his time saying that this would be good for the Spanish king as emperor of Europe to also be reading the New Testament in his own language. So he presented it to Charles and when Charles took it, you know, he opened it up and said, oh my, this is in the vernacular and quickly gave it to a bishop and ordered Francisco to be sent to prison. Later, Francisco, uh, after about six months of imprisonment on one particular religious day when there was uh, not many staff at the prison, he noticed his prison gate was open and he was able to escape his cell. No one was looking and he took off and was able to continue his historical and scholastic journey. So this is a very rare volume, 1543 Spanish New Testament. Another volume of great interest is this one here, the Dialogo de las Lenguas by Juan de Valdez. It's also a 16th century work, very rare, uh, hard to obtain, but the beauty of this is Juan de Valdez was one of the early Spanish reformers around the 1540s, and he wrote this volume as kind of a fun way to introduce people to the, the intricacies and glories of the Spanish language. It was used as a major text for a good while by people looking into how Spanish made the leap from Latin into the modern way we speak these days. Very interesting academic work, Dialogo de las Lenguas. Another volume we have here in this collection that's of interest is the Imagen del Anticristo. This uh, is, is a rather fiery tract that was written by Bernardo Diocino, who was an Italian reformer from the 16th century and translated into Spanish probably by Juan Pérez de Pineda, who was one of the early Spanish reformers. The interest in this particular little volume is that this was actually smuggled into Spain by Julián Hernández in 1557, along with New Testaments translated by Juan Pérez de Pineda. This particular book, it wasn't this actual one, was actually given to a, a man in Seville 
Spain when Julian came into town with this great secret load of Reformation books. A very dangerous thing to do at his time because of the intolerance of the day. And when uh, the recipient of this book, who was a man with a common name, it was actually the wrong person with the same name, got the book, was horrified, went straight to the offices of the Inquisition and denounced Julian Hernandez, who had to flee for his life, and was eventually captured, tortured for three years in the Inquisition castle in the river banks of Seville, and then uh, later paid for it dearly with his life being burned at the stake. Uh, the actual book itself is a gem, very well preserved. Uh, it has a rather strong and fiery denunciation of the Pope of Rome, uh, calling him the Antichrist from the uh, times of that day. That was a rather common thing. And so uh, this particular book also brought down the entire secret Protestant movement in southern Spain at that time. Because not only Julian was captured, but later also all the monks of St. Isidore Monastery were captured and many of the secret converts to Protestant faith were also taken to prison, processed, and burned at the stake. Other volumes in this collection include this one here, which is of great interest. Uh, this is actually uh, not so much a Spanish work, but it's John Wycliffe's Three Treatises of the Church, 1384, original volume. Incredible information. As you open it up, you'll see his, um, his great writing skills and ability. John Wycliffe, very interested in the, of course, Reformation of the English Church. And this particular volume is a very rare edition, uh, almost impossible to find, but that Wiffen collected and had uh, put together into this particular collection. Here's a volume of interest as well. This was written by Juan de Valdez. He was one of the early Spanish reformers from the 1540s who had fled to Italy and was part of a small group of people who met at uh, the, the castle of Julia Gonzaga, who was a young lady who at 16 married and then was soon widowed, uh, but was able to retain her estates and opened her castle to uh, Italians who were seeking a personal relationship with God of a Protestant type nature, we would probably term it today. So Juan de Valdez was actually the, the, the cleric that was with that group he wrote this commentary on the Book of Romans, dedicated it to Julia Gonzaga, very rare edition, uh, very valuable piece of information here, and of course, with Benjamin B. Whiffen's notes in the front, telling how he found the book and how it relates to other parts of history are, are fascinating for researchers and uh, anyone of a scholastic type nature. Here's another interesting volume by Juan Perez de Pineda. This was written in 1576 from Geneva, Switzerland. He was one of the Spanish reformers who formerly had lived as a monk in the monastery of San Isidoro del Campo, which is in Santi Ponce, Sevilla, Spain. He fled to Geneva in the early 1550s, and when he would heard that Julian Hernandez had been captured because of the previous comments we made upon the book Imagen del Anticristo, uh, and also all his fellow monks had been delivered up to the castle of Triana, the Inquisition headquarters. He wrote this letter to console them and to encourage them as they suffered for their faith. Very rare edition. Here's another interesting volume that was written in 1588 by Cipriano de Valera. He was another one of the monks that escaped from San Isidoro Monastery and made its way all the way to England in the 1550s and 60s, uh, lived in this uh, particular area, was at one time an instructor here at Oxford, but mostly spent his time at Cambridge. And he wrote this uh, little book called Dos Tratados del Papa y de la Misa. And it's uh, pretty much a history of the popes of Rome ever since the beginning of time up until the present day in the 16th century, but of great interest in this particular book is all the biographical information he gives about the Protestant movement of a secret nature in Seville in the 1540s and 1550s, how the monks escaped, 
and uh, it's just a great little volume, but just chock full, as you can see, of Whiffen's notes and information, all sorts of information about where he purchased the book. Uh, these, are, these are just classic collection editions of original works. Here's another rare book that's of the 19th century, which is a little bit different. Uh, this is Dr. William H. Rule, who was a Methodist minister, who was the first European to actually enter into Spanish soil to do uh, missionary type work in the 19th century, going from Gibraltar into Spain. It's the memoir of a mission to Gibraltar in Spain. I've looked for this book for years and years, never been able to find it. And here it is right here in this Benjamin B. Whiffen collection, 1844, a little more recent, but a uh, very influential and interesting book about the times. This particular author, William H. Rule, did a great scholarly study on the Inquisition that's in two volumes that I happen to have at home. But this is a, a, a fabulous edition, very well preserved and collected here at the Benjamin Whiffen collection. This last book, well, this book is by Juan Perez de Pineda, that I, I mentioned was a monk from San Isidro in del Campo in Seville, Spain, who fled to Geneva, and he published uh, in Spanish for the first time in history in 1557, the Psalms of David. This is a rare edition that uh, is of interest because Benjamin B. Whiffen happened to be an expert calligrapher, and he would find books that were sometimes missing the first pages as you can see, there's a difference of color between these initial pages and the rest of the book, the rest of the book being the original. And what he has done is he's actually found another edition of this same work and gone and hand copied by calligraphy and rebound the work so that's a complete work with an exact replica of the original's pages that are missing from the works. So this is quite an unusual undertaking, of course, with his typical notes in the front how he got the work and how it was collected. The importance of this for the Spanish-speaking movement uh, among Protestants uh, in that time, which was a secret movement, was that the clergy of Spain and, and most clergy in the Roman system had to uh, memorize the Book of Psalms. And so he thought this would make it much more meaningful to them to be able to memorize in their own heart language, which was the Spanish of that day. Very rare edition difficult to find. I've seen a few copies of this in other libraries, but this is very nicely done. It was rebound, as you can see, in a nice new format from the 19th century, but it is the original edition. <clears throat>